Hello, everybody, and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. I've had some questions about how to add tools to the Aspire, the Vectric Aspire tool database, what the various dimensions are, and how you input them into the machine or into the software. So I thought I'd take a quick minute and uh, just show a quick overview of some of the various bits and how they're added. And so I just have a normal file here that, that's open workspace here, 48 by 48, three quarters of an inch thick. None of that matters for this exercise. And then I'm going to come over here to this display tool database icon, and I'm going to open that. And then you have various imperial tools. End mills are the, the flat bottom ball nose or the rounded or the tapered uh, bits and then you have your V bits I've already done a video on form tools that you can see on the site and then we also have the same down here as it relates to metric uh, we have uh, in the metric tools we have end mills ball nose form tools etc okay and so typically when you get a bit, you have, this is from Tools Today, and these are some of the various bits that they carry, and typically they will give you these dimensions. So the little d is this dimension here, the L is the long dimension, the D is the diameter of the tip, very important. The big R is the radius of the tip. Again, very important. Excuse me. The degrees is the degree of taper. And then the, this large B in this particular case is the cutting depth. Now, manufacturers are different. Everybody doesn't use those same uh, indicators as it relates to how to enter the various bits. But let's take this. Uh, tapered metric ball nose as the example we've got a 6.2 degrees and so if you come back up here to the top let's find that uh, drawing again if you come back up here to the top here's the degrees to equate that into this vectric tool database I would go to my ball nose and I would select to add new. Tool type would be a tapered ball nose. My diameter is the large diameter, which is this D right here. In this case, it's a little d. And so I would come down here to the little d in my metric tapered ball nose here and the little d is six millimeters so over here my diameter is six millimeters then it's asking me for my degrees so I would come here and see that my degrees is 6.2 and so in Aspire I would enter 6.2 degrees now here's where it gets a little complicated tip radius so my tip radius if I look up here the radius is the big R which is going to be half of the big D and so if I scroll back down to the bit that we were looking at I notice here that my big R is 0.40 and my big D or diameter is 0.8. And so half of 0.8 is 0.4. Aspire wants the radius, not the diameter. So I'm going to put 0.4 millimeters. Then we have the pass depth. How deep do you want that to cut? And you typically, in these types of, of bits, the tapered ball nose in this particular size and configuration, I probably would not go more than a millimeter in terms of cutting depth. Oh, I'm sorry, I changed the wrong one. 
That was 0.4. I probably would not go more than uh, a millimeter, maybe a half a millimeter, but we'll put 1.0. The step over is when you're making a pass, how uh, far do you want the bit to move before it starts the next line? And usually 12% if it's not a finish your clearance pass, I usually try to go a little bit lower uh, in the 8% range. And then your spindle speed, feed rates, plunge rates, and tool number are going to vary by machine. But that's how you enter. You've got to understand the relationship between the bit manufacturer, what these letters up here indicate as it relates to the bit, and then how that equates to the information that Aspire is asking for here. Tapered ball noses being one of the more difficult because you have a tip radius, you have the angle, and then you have the overall diameter of the bit. And the letters don't always correspond. Now if I cancel that and I come back in here and let's say we want to do a metric end mill, those are a little bit easier because typically with the end mills, and again, we're going to take tool type, we're going to take end mill. All they want is the diameter of the end mill. How big is it down here in the flat? And so if you get a one millimeter diameter, you put one millimeter. And then you set your pass depth and your step over, spindle speed, feed rate, and plunge rate. So... I know that was a little bit fast, but I think if you'll understand the relationship, again, of the manufacturer's legend, and that corresponds to this legend that they have up here, and how that relates to what Aspire is asking for when you create a new tapered ball nose, this diameter, the angle, and the radius, I think we've explained the easiest way to get these into the database. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to email me at J-E-F, as in Frank, O-N-I-T-O-O, -O, at gmail.com. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip. This is Work Against the Grain. And again, my name is Jeff. Hey, thanks for watching.